Did you know NASA is planning to launch a space station to the moon? This first of its kind outpost is called Gateway, and it's a major step in humanity's journey back to the moon and beyond. But according to a recent Government Accountability Office report, there are some lingering problems that might be a stumbling block for the project on its way to the launch pad. The first components, the power and propulsion element and habitation and logistics outpost, are already under construction and will launch together atop a Falcon Heavy rocket. But how far along are they? What problems does the program need to address? And when exactly will it finally launch? If you're new here, I'm Derek, a journalist who's been writing about space for nearly a decade. My channel, Orbital Velocity, explores humanity's ongoing trek toward a multi-planetary future with engaging, accurate content for all, from casual observers to passionate space enthusiasts. If you like space and want to follow humanity's journey to the stars, consider subscribing. And don't forget to launch that like button into orbit. Gateway is a crucial part of NASA's Artemis program, which aims to return humans to the moon for the first time in over 50 years, this time to stay. So what exactly is Gateway? Well, think of it as a way station, a foothold in deep space. It's a habitat that will serve as a safe work environment for astronauts and a rendezvous point for lunar landers. It will also be used as a communications relay between Earth and astronauts on the lunar surface. Over time, the outpost is expected to be used to help us better understand how to live longer in deep space without constant resupply and inform decisions for NASA's transportation architecture for future missions to Mars. It'll be positioned in a special orbit balanced between the gravity of Earth and the Moon called a Near Rectilinear Halo Orbit, or NRHO. Over about a week, this trajectory will take Gateway as close as 1,500 kilometers over the lunar North Pole before swinging out to about 70,000 kilometers over the lunar South Pole. But why choose this orbit? While there are more reasons than just technical, a story that warrants a future video, there are a few key benefits. NRHO requires minimal propellant to maintain, it offers easier access for international partners, and offers constant communications with Earth. It also enables global lunar access and promotes access to the lunar poles, which is where NASA's Artemis program is focusing its efforts. So how does it compare to the 450 metric ton International Space Station in low Earth orbit? According to NASA, while the ISS is about the size of a six bedroom house, Gateway is more like a one bedroom apartment. This smaller size, around 63 metric tons when fully assembled, is due to the huge amount of propellant needed to transport materials to lunar distances. Like the ISS, Gateway is also an international project. NASA is working with the European Space Agency, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, the Canadian Space Agency, and the Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center. Together, they'll contribute six major components to Gateway. These components include the Power and Propulsion Element, or PPE, the Habitation and Logistics Outpost, or HALO, the Lunar International Habitation Module, the Lunar View Module, the Canadarm3 Robotics System, and the Crew and Science Airlock. The first two modules are the Power and Propulsion Element and Habitation and Logistics Outpost. As its name suggests, the PPE provides Gateway with power, communications, and the ability to change orbits. It will use solar electric propulsion thrusters to get to the moon and maintain its orbit around the moon. NASA initially awarded Maxar Space Systems a $375 million contract in 2019 to build it. As of July 2023, the total value of the contract has increased to over a billion dollars, due in part to the requirement changes by NASA and the decision to co-launch with the HALO module. HALO provides docking ports for visiting vehicles and other modules, has space for habitation and storage, as well as the systems to support crews aboard Gateway. It is being built by Northrop Grumman, which was awarded a contract worth $187 million in July 2020 to reach a preliminary design review. Since then, it was awarded a fixed firm price contract modification for module manufacturing. The current value of the contract is nearly $1.3 billion. As of summer 2024, Maxar just completed installing the final element of the PPE's central cylinder and propulsion system tanks, which are inside the cylinder. Its solar electric propulsion thrusters, being developed by Aerojet Rocketdyne, are undergoing qualification testing with installation expected sometime next year. Fabrication of the primary structure for HALO was also recently completed. That's being subcontracted to Tiles Alenia Space in Turin, Italy, which has a long history of making spacecraft modules for human spaceflight. It's currently undergoing testing and should be shipped to Arizona for outfitting by the end of the year. All of this is great, so when will it actually launch? As of August 2024, NASA is publicly saying no earlier than 2025, but according to the July 2024 Government Accountability Office report, the agency has a baseline launch readiness date of December of 2027. 
Once it launches, the PPE will use the most powerful solar electric engines ever flown to spiral out to the moon's orbit and settle into NRHO. This will take about a year. Once in place, NASA has contracted SpaceX to deliver supplies with a cargo ship called Dragon XL. This spacecraft will act as an attached pantry during Artemis missions, a place for specific mission supplies that can also be used to pack trash for eventual disposal. The first planned mission to Gateway, Artemis 4, will launch four astronauts in an Orion spacecraft atop an upgraded Space Launch System rocket. The rocket will have enough oomph to also carry the ESA-built Lunar IHAB module. Once en route to the moon, Orion will tow Lunar IHAB to Gateway, docking several days later. Two crew members would then transfer into SpaceX's Starship Human Landing System, which would be waiting for them at the Gateway for a week-long surface mission. Artemis 4 is expected to launch no earlier than September 2028. And there you get to the first problem noted by the GAO report. That's three months before the initial Gateway components reach the moon. The report says NASA is working to accelerate that timeline, but there are other problems that could make that difficult. The first being, the co-manifested payload may be too heavy. Not necessarily for the Falcon Heavy rocket, but for the solar electric propulsion system to get the whole stack into its final lunar orbit. For launch, HALO was allocated about 9,000 kilograms, and the PPE was allocated about 8,900 kilograms. Between the two, they were about 1,312 kilograms over their mass budget, with the bulk of that overage coming from the HALO module. According to the report, the mass for HALO has been increasing over the last year, in part because the contractor used an incorrect estimation to calculate the wire harness mass. That alone increased the mass by 602 kilograms. The report said NASA needs to document a mass management plan to ensure all parties can make timely decisions in alignment with the plan to ensure it has an executable mission design. There are several options to deal with this mass problem, but this could affect the already tight and delayed schedule. One option is to remove components from the initial modules, but that could affect its performance. There are also several radiation and solar science experiments planned to launch with HALO. Anything removed could go up on a logistics vehicle for a crew to install later, but that would take up valuable space for other logistical items. For example, the IHAB module being developed by the European Space Agency is also having mass issues and may need space on a logistics vehicle to send up its own removed items. Another option would be to narrow launch windows to those that use less fuel for transit. The report doesn't say this, but since SpaceX's lunar starship is so large, it might also have the potential to be used to send logistics to Gateway. But speaking of Starship, it's the cause of another problem facing Gateway. The PPE, which controls the orbit and pointing of the whole Gateway outpost, wasn't designed for very large landers. In fact, Starship's mass is about 18 times greater than the value used to develop PPE's controllability parameters. While smaller than Starship, it's unclear if Blue Origin's Blue Moon Lander is also more massive than the original government design reference, which was put out before the selection of the human landing system contracts. Losing precise control of the Gateway integrated stack could result in degradation of performance. For example, if it's not pointed in the right direction, it could affect communications, power generation from solar panels, or the ability for visiting vehicles to successfully dock securely with the Gateway. In a worst case scenario, this could cause a loss of mission situation. So how to fix this? Well, according to the GAO report, Gateway officials are studying two main ways to mitigate the risk. The first would be to have visiting vehicles, Orion, Dragon XL, and the Human Landing System, share their control responsibility when the docked mass of the outpost is greater than the original parameters. The second would be to make changes to the control algorithms for the PPE to improve control throughout the entire docking process, improving how the program selects different thrusters to fire and optimize fuel use based on the visiting vehicle that is docked to Gateway. If neither of those options mitigate the risk, then NASA would have to change the PPE's requirements or add requirements for visiting vehicles. But that would surely lead to increased costs and massive schedule delays. This will also have implications for NASA's future gateway plans as a test bid for Mars mission architectures. If it has problems with large landers docked, how will that affect the mission profile of a Mars transit vehicle that might also be docked or assembled at Gateway? Speaking of Mars, the GAO also warns that Gateway's 15-year lifespan may limit its use for preparing for crewed exploration of the Red Planet. Assuming a 2027 launch, that would put its expected end of life at about 2042, right at the beginning of when NASA plans crewed Mars missions, currently around the late 2030s. But NASA says it expects Gateway to last longer than 15 years. 
The ISS, for example, launched in 1998, was originally planned for 15 years and is now likely to last for more than 30 years before it's retired. However, Gateway's environment is different from that of low Earth orbit. There's more radiation and there will be lots of uncrewed time between missions when things can break. While it can rely on autonomous systems and robotics, should there be more maintenance than remote operation can handle, the outpost could be adversely affected. NASA has a critical design-informed synchronization review planned for September 2024. That is expected to allow the agency to update cost and schedule analysis for the Gateway. During the review, NASA is expected to address issues from the latest GAO report, including the recommendation to present an overall mass management plan, something NASA concurs with. The ongoing development of Gateway underscores the dynamic nature of space exploration, with each solution, design trade-off, and innovation pushing the boundaries of what is possible. The path ahead for the Artemis program is complex and sometimes frustrating, but each step forward brings us closer to a multi-planetary future. I'm curious to know your views on the Gateway Outpost. What are you most looking forward to, and do you believe the recent report issues will cause delays? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, at Astra.